Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn how to associate images to our markups with captures. We can associate an image to our markups by clicking on our markup. It could be a regular markup or a measurement markup. In this case, we'll use this area measurement. Right-clicking on the markup, and then mousing over capture. And then we have two options. We can directly get images from a camera that's connected to our computer, or we can click on From File and find any image that's already saved on our computer. In this instance, we're going to do From File. Then we can choose an image. I'm just going to use this one right here that I've used in previous tutorials and click on Open. Now, nothing seems to have really happened except that there's a new icon on the bottom right of my markup. And as I zoom out, this icon gets bigger and bigger. And as I zoom in, it gets smaller and smaller. So here it is. This is the capture icon. And essentially, we can click on it. And now we can see our image. So now this image is tied to this markup. If I save my drawing and share this with someone, they can essentially take this markup, click on the captures button, see the image, and now they have the same options that we have right here. For example, for us, it's not really useful to click on this button right here, which allows us to export our current image, or if we have more than one image associated with this markup, to export all of the images. But this is great for somebody else that doesn't have the image itself, but does have this file with these images associated to the markups in a capture. So we can export current, and that way we can save the image to our computer if we didn't have it already. Then we can cycle between images with these arrows here and here, but right now we can't because we only have one image, so there's nothing to cycle to. And so to add more images, we can click on this icon right here, and it essentially allows us to add more. So let's use our logo this time at DDS CAD, and there we have it. Now we have two images. We can then use our arrows and cycle between them and see what is different between them. So now we have two more options on the edges. We have this left side option right here, and I have a big surprise for you guys. When you click on it and you have a webcam on your computer, this happens. So hello, my name is Ari, like I said earlier, and it is a pleasure to be giving you guys these tutorials. And this is just an example of how Bluebeam is interfacing with different hardware associated with our computer. And so here, my webcam just turned on. I can see myself. I have some options here. Right now, I can choose to basically take a photo by clicking on the center button right here. So I'm going to smile. Cheese. There it is. And now I can choose to retake the image or use it. I think it looks pretty good, so I'm going to use it. And now it's part of my captures. So I can cycle between all three of these images just like that. Let's go back there one more time. Hello, everybody. And we have another option on the left side right down here. We can click on this, and we can choose between photo or video. So now, instead of just taking a photo, I can click on video. Now what's going to happen is you'll notice that my resolution got a little bit lower. And that's because there are different settings for photo and video. So for example, I'll just take a quick video with you all. Hello, everybody. My name is Ari, and this is a little video that's part of captures and part of our tutorial. So I'm going to end it right there. And there we go. Now it's going to allow me to use it. Oh, that isn't a flattering face, but that's okay. I'll click on use. And now we can tell that this is a video because it has a nice little playback bar. We have this play button. And I can cycle between the images and videos. And they're basically lumped together as part of a capture that is basically part of this markup. Now we have a few more things that we can do. Let's go back into this mode right here. Hello again. And the last button that I want to show you all is this button right here. And you might be familiar with this if you've seen other tutorials or used Bluebeam Review in the past. This is actually linking directly to our preferences. So we could have changed this ahead of time, but I wanted to show you guys how captures work. So let's click on this now. And what it's going to do is it takes us directly to preferences. We're now in the export or the import export category on the left side. And then we're looking at the images column. And this allows us to change lots of different settings. For example, I don't want my video resolution to be so low, so I'm going to switch it to medium. I'm also going to change my photo resolution to high. Let's see how those two look now that we've changed that. Then we have our camera portrait orientation, so we can change that from normal to inverted. So if we had an external webcam and for some reason we had to have it mounted upside down, then we can switch it to inverted, and that way we wouldn't have to worry about mounting it right side up every single time. 
So we can change that. Many other different options here. Let's go through them. We can import our image resolution and choose how it's going to look. So if an image is coming from our computer and the image doesn't have a high resolution, then we can basically choose a high resolution and review will try to fix it up. But it doesn't really work that way. Images can't really become higher resolution. They can only go lower in resolution to save on space. So if you wanted to, you can always have your images come in at low resolution, regardless of what resolution they are. And this can save you space and a little bit of time as well. But we'll leave it at original. I like to keep my images as they are. Then we have the image drag drop behavior. So we can basically click on this. And what this means is that when we place an image into our capture, we can choose whether or not we attach the photo or we can actually create a hyperlink directly to it. So there's different ways of doing it. Attaching the photo is what we've seen now. The photo is directly attached to the markup. And when we save the file, the photo is basically part of the markup. So that's essentially how that works. And we have a few other settings here that allow us to basically change some automatic preferences. Let's not worry too much about these. You guys can explore these a little bit later. But basically, now that we've changed a few settings up here for our photo and video resolution, let's click OK. We're now back. Hello again. And let's see. It looks like we're still in video mode. And already I can tell that it's looking a lot better. Let's take a video first. So. Hello again. This is now a higher resolution video. It's actually medium compared to low. And now let's stop the video. There we go. Another, ooh, very flattering face right there. Very nice. Let's use this one just for fun. And now we can compare it to the other one. We can already tell how much more pixelated the first video is compared to this one. And let's go back there one more time. Hello once again. And let's switch back to photo. And now, Look at that. That's a really crisp, high quality photo. It even zoomed out just a little bit based on our settings. Very, very good. So let's take a photo. I'll do another smile. There we go. And let's use this one. What a silly photo. And there we go. So that photo is looking a lot more crisp than the first photo right there. We can see that there's a lot more pixelation happening right here. Very, very good. And this is how essentially captures work. And you can essentially save space on your drawing by associating images directly to markups instead of having them free floating. So for example, I'll just click away from this. These images here, they take up space. So if you don't want them to take up space on your drawing, you can just associate them to one markup. You can have so many associated. Just now we have six different assets, a combination of images and videos. And this is essentially how captures works. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial on how to associate images to a capture in Bluebeam Review. Once again, my name is Ari and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a great rest of your day.